Today I'm going to go over if you should be taking creatine and which creatine is best for your particular goals. First, let's start by acknowledging the fact that you do not need creatine. You don't really need any kind of supplements to get results, but creatine is one of the few supplements that can actually help. It is also one of the most widely researched supplements available on the market today with one of the highest proven success rates. So what are some reasons for you to take creatine? If you're trying to bulk up your muscles and you want to help your muscles grow a little faster, then that's a good time to take creatine. If you're trying to increase your strength and set some new PRs, then that's also another good time to take creatine as well. If you want to increase your energy to perform higher intensity workouts, again, that's a good time to take creatine. There's also even some evidence that creatine can help reduce inflammation after a workout, which can help speed up your recovery time. Some studies also report that creatine has neuroprotective functions and it can enhance bone regeneration. So if you break any bones, you know exactly what supplement to turn to. Now if you're cutting or trying to look like you have really defined muscles, then you may want to be careful with what type of creatine you choose to take because certain types of creatine can increase your water weight and make you hold more water, make you look more bloated, which will take away a lot of that definition that you're striving for. Creatine monohydrate is a type of creatine that actually is known to have that bloating effect. Even though it does have this side effect, I usually recommend creatine monohydrate because it is the type of creatine used in the majority of the creatine research and studies. Also, even though there are many new types of creatine, monohydrate is still one of the most widely used. Regardless, it is still worth it to take a look at the other types available on the market. Micronized creatine is probably the second most popular form. The only difference is that the creatine molecules have been cut up or divided. This makes it easier and faster for your body to absorb and also reduces any kind of stomach discomfort. Next we got creatine phosphate, which is supposed to give you more energy than regular creatine monohydrate. The reality is that creatine phosphate has never been shown in studies to be more effective than monohydrate and it's much more expensive. Another form of creatine is creatine citrate, and this is supposed to be one of the more absorbable forms of creatine. If you have a lot of stomach discomfort when taking creatine, give this one a shot. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different types of creatine, and we're not even close to done yet. Creatine ethyl ester is another form of creatine that is supposed to be 10 times as absorbable as monohydrate. Unfortunately, there are no studies to back this claim up. However, many do claim that you don't need as much of a dose, it's easier to absorb, and you don't get that bloated look when taking it. Next is creaclin, which is supposed to be the most absorbable form of creatine out of all of them. Reported benefits include a faster absorption rate, no loading phase, no creatine bloat, and immediate results. Another form of creatine is creatine serum, which is reported to have mixed results. Some people say it works, and some people say it doesn't work at all. This creatine has been dissolved in water and usually has added vitamins and amino acids. Then we got creatine hydrochloride, which is creatine bound with hydrochloric acid. It's turned into a basic creatine molecule in your stomach, and while it may be more water soluble than creatine monohydrate, no research has yet proven it to be any more effective. Creatine nitrate is similar except it's bound to a nitrate group, making it supposedly again more absorbable. And once again, there's no research to back this up. The last form of creatine that I'm going to talk about today is creatine effervescent, which is basically creatine combined with sugar, salt, and a chemical that makes it bubble, which supposedly helps with its absorption. Again, this isn't proven and it's also an extremely expensive form of creatine. Okay, so now that I've laid out all these different types of creatine, I know that you're probably more confused than before you started watching this video. And that's understandable. But basically, all these different forms of creatine are the same, except some claim to be more absorbable than others in different ways. Regardless, there are still a lot of different types of creatine to choose from, and I don't even think I mentioned all of them. 
So to make this a little easier on you, you should know that the most studied, most proven, and the cheapest remains to be creatine monohydrate. And that's why I recommend it. If you're cutting and want to go with a creatine that eliminates bloating, try creaclin, creatine ethyl ester, or micronized creatine. A big question that people have is when they should take it. Should you take it pre-workout? Should you take it post-workout? Or in the middle of a workout? And the truth is that it doesn't matter at all. Take it whenever you want. It's going to be stored in the muscles until it's required for use anyway, so it truly doesn't matter. The last thing that I want to touch on in regard to this topic is loading and cycling off of creatine. It's been proven that loading creatine is completely unnecessary. The only time that I would recommend loading is if you need the creatine for some kind of crazy athletic event in the next day or two, or you need to get as swole as possible in the next day or two. And even in these scenarios, you may not have any better effects by loading. But outside of these scenarios, even though the supplement you buy may tell you to load with higher dosages for the first week or two, ignore the label and just take the regular dosage. Again, loading is not necessary. Now as far as cycling goes, for the longest time it was believed that you should never take creatine for longer than 6 weeks because otherwise your body will stop producing its own natural creatine. Then all of a sudden that number got bumped up to 8 weeks. And now there are many people claiming that you don't have to cycle it at all. And the truth is that as of now, there's no proven reason to cycle. However, I like to cycle creatine because after I've been taking it for a while, I don't feel the effects quite as much. This might just be a placebo effect, but whenever I first start taking creatine is when I tend to have the best results. So I'll generally cycle for six weeks on and four weeks off. Again, this is just a personal preference. If you don't want to cycle with the information that we have available to us right now, you don't have to. That's it guys, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helped you guys out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a big thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you guys next time.